So, One Piece 1044. It was a bit of an uneventful one, wasn't it? It's not really a lot to talk about. Kidding, could you even imagine? My wig is literally snatched. Also, I just couldn't be bothered with it today. Hello, humans of the world. I'm Dawn of the World. Welcome aboard. Before we get into all of the details of 1044, I would like to apologize for misspeaking. I was going to release a general discussion video sometime between last chapter and this chapter, but uh, that didn't really end up happening. Once I was set to work on that, the hype for 1044 was already well underway and it just didn't seem like the right time to release that. Nonetheless, that will be out soon and there are also numerous other big One Piece announcements that are apparently well on the horizon. So there's going to be a lot of topics for us to talk about in the coming weeks when I am at home. This is just a really exciting time for all of us as One Piece fans. There's so much going on. It's the it's the place to be at the moment. Anyway, it's not every week that we get a chapter like this and it's not every year that a chapter falls on your birthday. So I feel especially lucky and privileged to have welcomed in the last year of my 20s on such a high. Such a special and historic day for the story world of One Piece and for Luffy as a character. Sakaichi, if you're watching this, happy Happy birthday to you as well. I hope you had a great day and congratulations on graduating as well. I hope you enjoyed this incredible chapter that we'll now start talking about. It still doesn't feel real, does it? Luffy's fruit being the Gomu Gomu no Mi and him having been a rubber man have been One Piece gospel for the past 25 years. The hints that it could have been maybe something different or something more have always been there in hindsight, but far too peripheral, too obscure to be considered until more recently when highly indicative instances such as Who's Who's Revelation and the Gorosei's discussion gave us a quick heads up and now it really feels as though the rug has been pulled out from beneath us and the foundations of some of the most basic One Piece lore we've always known have collapsed. The entire series is different now and will never be the same. We're not going to be able to reread the series the same way ever again, and yet at its core, the story is more One Piece than ever before. Luffy's fruit, the Hito Hito no Mi, model Nika the Sun God, is said to be the most ridiculous power in the world, limited only by the user's imagination. The warrior of liberation, bringing joy to people and granting its user access to immense freedom of self, this fruit and its revelation in this chapter is such a colourful and vibrant celebration of Luffy's character. There's this really interesting kind of rhythm playing through Luffy's scenes this chapter, that being the drums of liberation Zunisha was talking about at the end of the last chapter. As noted by Luffy, this drumming sound is actually his heartbeat. Music is so important and integral to One Piece, like think about for how long Luffy wanted a musician. And in the same way Big Sake was really lifted by the audio component of the anime, I can't wait to see or rather hear what they do with these drums. Like something reminiscent of the drums in Shandora would be really wonderfully fitting, I think. Given that Zunisha only really realized Luffy was Joy Boy upon the drumming sound and not during the Zo arc, it seems as though Joy Boy is intrinsically tied to Luffy's Gear 5, which also seems to double as his fruit's awakening. Since the Gorusei say that this fruit's awakening grants the user even more freedom in their creativity, and we see Luffy's form warping at a rapid speed and he even manipulates the environment around him, lifting a slab of stone like rubber and of course him announcing that this is his peak. And I personally think that this is his peak for now. Given the story isn't actually finished yet and there's still a whole lot of things to be tied up concerning Blackbeard, Imu, Laugh Tail, etc, I feel like Luffy could probably have one more major power up before the end, but uh, for now this is a uh, this is something else. And Luffy has been gearing up for this form for a few chapters now. This one panel we were all commenting on back in chapter 1041, we saw what we now understand to be the Gear 5. He literally grabs Dragon Kaido and pulls him up through the hole in the Skull Dome. Like, you know, when there's a snake in your house and you're like, oh, come here, bad boy. Bad example, I feel like that's an exclusively Australian experience. A bit, you know. The way he grabs Kaido, like, now wait just a moment, I'm not done with you. It's just... It's fantastic. It also keeps up with the trend of Dragon Kaido's primary function being purely decorative and taking most damage. The cartoony way Gear 5 Luffy has just thrashed him around, like this opponent being the world's strongest creature, simultaneously shows how close we are to the endgame, while also giving us this nostalgic feeling of the goofiness of early One Piece. It's a goofiness that has persisted throughout the whole entire series, but amidst the slightly more mature 
backdrop of more recent years, it feels like a blast from the past and a reminder that at its core, One Piece is a story that, while bleak and dark at times, it's also outrageous and zany and ridiculous, and that Luffy as a character is someone who first and foremost brings laughter and joy to his crewmates, to his friends, to the people he liberates. He even brought something adjacent to joy to Kaido because he wasn't dead after all. Not to mention the joy that he brings to the readers and to everybody who's ever loved One Piece. This chapter was a love letter to the early arcs of the series, full of wonder and adventure. And the nostalgia is further dialed up by this pose Luffy makes in the final page, reminiscent of his Romance Dawn page on the cover of Volume 1. But anyway, Luffy is absolutely the perfect person for this fruit, and while some might say that One Piece has now gone down the typical path of making the protagonist some kind of chosen one, I would argue that the fact that Luffy is the protagonist at all is an act of turning fate on its head, because in many respects, if One Piece were a more typical shonen series, the protagonist really should have been Ace. In fact, it's possible that Ace was the very person for whom this legendary fruit, Shanks and his crew had intended. Ace was, after all, the son of the legendary Pirate King, the legacy of Goldie Roger, whom Roger would have chosen as his successor to advance to Laugh Tale, become Joy Boy, and obtain the One Piece. To give you a bit of an idea about how typical shonen Ace as the protagonist would have been, I had a friend about a decade ago who was first starting to read One Piece, and within the first couple of arcs, he was like, I bet Gold Roger's gonna be Luffy's dad, innit? And I was like, shut up, keep reading, you know nothing. The same friend also suggested that the One Piece was going to be uh, the power of friendship or just Luffy's straw hat. Which, to be fair, the hat could now have something to do with it, but on a much grander Joy Boy meta kind of scale than uh, the just kind of a sentimental hat idea this friend of mine probably had. But I guess my point is that One Piece a lot of the time does not follow the format of its shonen neighbours. In fact, it takes people's expectations of conforming to those shonen neighbours and relies on those shonen neighbours to take those expectations and to turn them on their heads. So there'll often be times when we and others will be like, oh yeah, I see what Oda's doing. It's like the, the moment in Naruto, isn't it? But the next second we'll be like, I have no earthly notion of what makes this man tick. On that note, allow me to share more of my thoughts on what scenarios I think have eventuated. It's not too far out there to think that maybe Shanks and his crew procured this fruit in order to bring it to Ace and enable Roger's wish. And Luffy has come barreling in left of field, falling into the role of an accidental protagonist. And it was especially after all the fact when he made his declaration about becoming the Pirate King that Shanks truly jumped ship and was like, maybe it's this sassy child. You could say that fate has been grabbed by the tail, swung around and bashed into the ground repeatedly. Also, as we spoke about a few chapters back, Shanks knows the true name of Luffy's fruit. And he has from the very start of the series in 1997. That's before Google was invented. It's also extremely likely that his crew, or at least the inner circle of his crew, those being Ben Beckman, Lucky Roo, Yasop, etc., have also always known the true nature of this fruit. The fact that Shanks has known this, and the fact that the Gorusei have only just become certain that Luffy's fruit is what it is, seem to be pointing in the direction that Luffy may be the certain pirate Shanks wished to speak about with the Gorusei during the Reverie, but that doesn't really feel right. I just don't feel like he would do Luffy dirty like that. This may be one piece, but there's still multiple pieces of this big old puzzle that we haven't found yet. And I think it's highly possible that Shanks could have been talking about someone else there, but who that is remains to be a mystery. Anyway, while we're here, for me this also raises some questions regarding the true nature of Blackbeard's darkness. Would that be some kind of mythical Zoan as well? I know the theories about him having the octopus or kraken fruit are out there to explain him being able to hold multiple fruits, but when it comes to the darkness specifically, what do you guys reckon's the go with that? The sun god versus some kind of entity of darkness it really feels fitting in my opinion. Anyway, I will talk more about Dripper, the Gorosei, and the CP0 in another video, but seeing everybody's reactions to Gear 5 was a high point. So out of the crew we've only seen Sanji, Nami, and Chopper. I would love to see what Usopp's thinking and all of the rest of them. Not to mention the Zoro's escapades with death plot point, but I think that's a whole plot point for a bit later on. It was also fantastic to see the continuation and the ending of Hiyori's confrontation with Orochi, though I won't really cover that in this video since pretty much all of the hype that everyone has wanted to talk about has been of course Gear 5, Luffy, Joy Boy, Nika, 
of the Sun God, the amalgamation of all of these things, this reveal that was 25 years in the making. So lastly, I just want to take a moment to appreciate how this revelation must feel for Oda. He has had this in mind for longer than some of you have been alive. So after a whole quarter of a century of waiting, he has finally been able to share this with the world. Uh, can you imagine how that must feel? Also, if you're younger than One Piece, share down below the arc in which you were born. I'm older than One Piece, so like, I, I can't do that. But anyway, there are some absolutely huge happenings going on, and I wish I could cover some more of these topics in greater depth for you and greater extensivity. But this isn't a great few months for me to be able to produce such regular content. Anyway, what are you guys' thoughts of this 25 year reveal? Let me know down below. I'm Dawn of the World, and I will see you next time. Later, guys.